Anzac Day service. I now invite Abby Hopewell to read an acknowledgement of country. As we gather today, we acknowledge that we are on the land for which the Indigenous owners and their forebears have been custodians for many thousands of years. Theirs is the oldest living culture on earth. On this land, the Turrbal people have performed old aged ceremonies of celebration, initiation and renewal. We acknowledge their living culture and unique role in the life of this region and pay respects to their elders, past, present and future. I now invite our college principal, Miss Gelvin, to deliver her address. Anzac Day 2020 is a very different experience for all of us. When Anzac Day services were cancelled throughout the country, St John Fisher College made the decision to record a virtual service to allow the girls and our community to still be part of a day that is so significant to us as Australians. Girls, you by now in your lives know a lot about Anzac Day and why it is so important for us as Australians. Those of you who have made the effort to go to a dawn service or another ceremony in previous years would have some sense of that already. It is a time we gather and remember the sacrifice of those who have faced war on our behalf. Getting up for a dawn service heightens the sacred nature of the day. Even if that this year means going to the end of your driveway, as I know many of you will have done. The original Anzacs joined up for many reasons, for adventure and excitement, wanting to serve their country, perhaps a sense of obligation. They personify endurance. They have known fear and helplessness. They've lived in very dirty and uncomfortable conditions, gone without sleep and cried secretly with homesickness and wondered if it would ever end and did they have the courage to see it through. And yes, they did see it through. For the most part, we don't know the names of the men and women who regularly march in Anzac Day services or whose names are on the many memorials around the country, but we embrace their spirit and we invite their example into our everyday lives. Their lives and their deaths have meaning for us today. We can look to them when we have rough patches, as we invariably will in our lives. We are actually going through a national crisis unlike any we have seen before with the current pandemic. It is a pandemic of a virus and a pandemic of fear. Our resilience, our care for one another and our Anzac Day spirit is needed now more than ever. The paradox of life is that out of terrible horror can come positives. We have seen that over and over in our personal lives and in our history. Out of the very worst situations can come positives. Out of the horror of World War I and the terrible loss of life came a deeper relationship with Turkey, came an appreciation of shared values, came an understanding of the price of peace. These are things we should not take for granted. As we move out of the current crisis, and we will, we will start to find positives in the ways we pull together as a community. Thank you girls for the way you have approached Anzac Day 2020. It is not what any of us anticipated when the year began. I am proud of the way you've conducted yourselves during this time and the way you have participated virtually on this very significant occasion. Thank you. Our student leaders will now come forward and lay items which are significant symbols for this occasion. Among these is the herb rosemary. This plant has particular significance for Australians as it is found growing wild on the Gallipoli Peninsula the site of the original Anzac Day. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. In the Gospel reading we are reminded of the ultimate sacrifice that one person can make for another to lay down his or her life. And so we continue our service today remembering that it was over 100 years ago that World War I, what was called the War to End All Wars, where so many Australians gave their lives so far from Australian shores, came to an end. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but 
Anzac Day, 25th of April, is one of Australia's most important national occasions. It marks the anniversary of the first major military action fought by the Australians and New Zealand forces during the First World War. Anzac stands for the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. The soldiers in those forces quickly became known as the Anzacs, and the pride they took in that name endures to this day. So why is this day special to Australians? When war broke out in 1914, Australia had been a federated nation for only 13 years, and its government was eager to establish a reputation among the nations of the world. When Britain declared war in August 1914, Australia was automatically placed on the side of the Commonwealth. In 1915, Australian and New Zealand soldiers formed part of the expedition that set out to capture the Gallipoli Peninsula in order to open the Dardanelles to the Allied navies. The ultimate objective was to capture Constantinople, which is now known as Istanbul, the capital of the Ottoman Empire and ally of Germany. The Australian and New Zealand forces landed on Gallipoli on 25th of April, meeting fierce resistance from the Ottoman Turkish defenders. What had been planned as a bold stroke to knock Turkey out of the war quickly became a sta stalemate, and the campaign dragged on for eight months. At the end of 1915, the Allied forces were evacuated from the peninsula, with both sides having suffered heavy casualties and endured great hardships. More than 8,000 Australian soldiers had died in the campaign. Gallipoli had a profound impact on Australians at home, and 25th of April soon became the day on which Australians remembered the sacrifices of those who died in the war. Although the Gallipoli campaign failed in its military objectives, the actions of the Australian and New Zealand forces during the campaign left a powerful legacy. What became known as the Anzac legend became an important part of the identity of both nations, shaping the ways in which they viewed both their past and their future. Bridget will now read the Brown Slouch Hat poem written by J. Elbert and Son. There is a symbol, we love and adore it. You see it daily wherever you go. Long years have passed since our fathers once wore it. What is the symbol that we should all know? It's a brown slouch hat with the side turned up and it means the world to me. It is the symbol of our nation, the land of liberty. As soldiers they wear it, how proudly they bear it for all the world to see. Just a brown slouch hat with the side turned up, heading straight for victory. Don't you thrill as young Bill passes by? Don't you beam at the gleam in his eye? Head erect, shoulders square, tunic spick and span, every inch a soldier and every inch a man. As they swing down the street, aren't they grand? Three abreast to the beat of the band. But what do we remember when the boys have passed along, marching by so brave and strong? Just a brown.
to read the Ode of Remembrance, which will be followed by the last post and a minute's silence. The Ode of Remembrance, which is now said, was written in 1914, and it was traditionally spoken on Anzac Day. The traditional response is for the audience to repeat the last line, we will remember them. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them, lest we forget. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in this year's Anzac Day service.